You're listening to Radio Mayapur with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is Radio Mayapur. Good morning, everyone. This is Gangadas, your host, and we are in Radio Mayapur studio. Today we have with us a wonderful devotee. His name is Bhagavat Amrita Das. He's full of nectar. I know him from the very beginning of my spiritual life in Mayapur. We were in Sankirtan together for maybe 10 years. We had a lot of fun, a lot of story. We still have a lot of fun. The fun goes on because Krishna consciousness means happiness. So, Bhagavad Amrita Prabhu, I'm very happy that you are with us today. Please, Bhagavad Amrita is 66 years old, married with a son, and he has two sisters in Brazil. His father was Italian, from near Florence. Everybody has some Italian connection for some reason, but his mother was from Germany, so she was very strict and trained him up nicely. And he took initiation from Srila Prabhupada in 1976. Now, Bhagavad Amira Prabhu, please, uh, I'll let you speak. And I want you to say to all our listeners a little bit of uh, how you came in contact with devotees. Because, you know, that's very, very important. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here, Ganga. It's a pleasure. I compliment in the crew in here, fantastic people and fantastic studio. Congratulations on your studio here. You can underarm work really hard to put it together. He's our main sponsor and main people. And he's in control of the mixer and the recording. He's the, he's the heart of uh, our Radio Mayapur, where we broadcast every day music, bhajan, kirtan, lecture, and whatnot. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, the first time I came in contact with Krishna consciousness, I was, I, this was in the 70s, maybe 75, 74, maybe 74. I was traveling that time you do. So anyway, I travel. I went from Brazil, I went south, I went to Uruguay, I went to Argentina. I even took La Train de la Morte. It's a, it's a, a train that goes in the top of the Alp, Alp, Alpes. You know, Alpes, no, what called the whatever mountain, yeah, mountain range, range they have in there. In South America. In South America, yeah. It's called the Andes. The no? Andes, yeah. yeah. It goes from Peru all the way down, in, uh, you know. It's quite long, actually, yeah. more than 20,000 so, kilometers. So I, I, I was in there, and I went all the way. I ended up in Venezuela. Wow. There's so many stories in there, in this train de la morte. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So I I met my sister in there. In and Caracas. In Caracas. And she was, you know, one point she was packing, and she wanted to uh, go to Cucuta by car, which is in the... I think, western side of Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, west in Caracas, in the more or less in the middle. So they're going to go in a trip, and they have this car, and um, they want to put the stuff in there. They're going to go. I was going with them. She said, I have so many books, all kinds of books. So she was making one pile of the books that go with her, and one pile of the books that stay. And then she's going to live there or give it away or something. And I was in the middle, putting books here, books, books there. And then she gave me one small book called Viaging Fácil a los Otros Planetas. Oh, easy journey to other planets. Easy journey to the other planets. Beautiful. With the beautiful yogi meditating in the sky blue in the back, you know, all the chakras, you know, this nebulous photo was so attractive. So I grasped that book and I said, this one I want for me. Of all the books in there, <laughs> and there was a lot. I said, this one I will take with me. And I was traveling. Wow. You don't get so much weight with you. So, but I, this little one, I take it. She so said, okay. So later on, I read the book and I couldn't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> but... There is a button there because this is the movement of Lord Sri Chaitanya. 
one thing I read that is stuck in my mind. It says that if you want spiritual life, you have to associate with those who also want spiritual life. And that make, made a lot of sense. Yeah, of course. Actually, it makes perfect sense. Why would you be with somebody else? If you want a spiritual life, why would you be with somebody else that's not interested spiritual life. in the spiritual life? If you stay with those that are interested, you accelerate your development. Makes perfect sense. So the trip it went on. I carried the book. I went back to Sao Paulo. And then at one point, I was I was in this Avenida Paulista in Sao Paulo. It's like a, it's a big avenue, business business buildings all over. Right? You know, it's like a Wall Street, mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. So the body was there in the Calzada, the pathway, you know, people walking the side of the road. It was Pioneer. I mean, it was a Colombian body. So he was there, you know, you see, he was working hard, you know, his daughter was a little with the suit of Sao Paulo, you know, I could see. And then I, I went to him and I said, hey, I want to get some incense because, you know, they sell incense. He said, oh, I have books. I got the book already. So he gave me an invitation to visit the temple. And that was a beautiful Radha Krishna. It's, it's not a, a painting, it was a drawing, black and white, nice. classic, you know, and Krishna and Radha in there. It's a beautiful, very delicate design. It's a very classic in Isco. I don't see anymore, but, you know, it was there at that time. So I, he said there is a, a free a free is fist. Free fist. Yeah. The magic word. <laughs> <laughs> the magic mantra. The free fist. You know, you're going to like it, blah, blah, blah. You know, we talk about yoga. I just, well, free fist sounds good, you know. <laughs> like we say in Brazil, you know, uh, free, uh, no, a tenja so na testa. You know, uh, free is okay. You know, even if you take a... a, a a syringe in your, you know, in your <laughs> skull. That, that's good. It's free, right? So anyway, I I went there Sunday feast next Sunday feast. So I walk in there, and uh, I don't know what to wait. I don't know what to expect actually. And I um, walk. The temple was very silent, and then you know, as you expect, you know, some spiritual atmosphere. So. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, I walk in and, well, I didn't know all the devotees were kind of meeting somewhere and for some reason, because of the Sunday feast, they organized things. But anyway, suddenly there was this conscious blow and the devotees start coming from all over the place, from this door, that door, from the window. And I mean, I mean speaking, <laughs> <laughs> but they came from all over the place. Ah, blah, 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 blah talking loud and doing all kinds of things. And that, wow, you know, this is quite amazing. So they, uh, there was this conch in there and everybody's there, you know, looking for this curtain and the conch will blow. It was, was a kind of astounding because it's the first time you hear the sound of a conch shell, yeah. you know, in the in, in first time in the yeah. puja scenario. So I was startled, and then they opened the curtain, and I, I look, and there was this big picture of Panchatattva. They worshipped the picture at that time. And I look, and everybody went down the floor. You see, I look, Panchatattva, I look, everybody on the floor. And then I was astounded, what to do? And then the president starts singing. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. Another, you know, startling revelation. And then everybody sing after him. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, one, two, three, like, you know, the series of punts, you know, like, wow. So uh, that, then they start singing and then the kittens start going and they're doing the thing with this lamparina, this, what do you call this, a gilam. lamp. And, you know, after the incense, all this good stuff. And then everybody starts dancing. And the curtain becomes very, very excited. 
And the president, he's beating the drum in there and everybody's jumping up and down. He comes to me, he looks to me like in the eye, you know, like, you know, come on, come on, you know. Come on, do your dancing. And I said, I'm going to show this guy. I'm going to show this guy what dance is all about, you know. I am the dancerino, right? <laughs> so I went there, you know, and started spreading my legs, arms, you know, the karmic <laughs> dance. He tried to imitate the devotees like it was, it was a funny one. So they all got excited, you know. It was a good time. And then later on, we have the, we went for the feast. Yeah. It was focused on the mission. We got the mission. So there was the Prashadan, which was amazing Prashadan. I remember the halava was very you know, delicious. It's a new taste, of course. Yes. And then I was eating by myself because I'm Italian. So my father would say, Cono mangia e non se parla. Yeah, when you eat, you don't talk. Yes, we eat quite, and you could hear the, the spoons, you know, hitting the plates, you know, and you could very quietly, you know, and not too much talk. So I was eating quite, and this devotee, he sits in front of me and start talking. <laughs> and I feel disturbed. I was just talking, I mean, eating here, you know, and blah, blah, <laughs> blah, 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 this, that. And this Vishnu personality that has four arms, my hand halfway through the <laughs> mouth stopped, I look at me and say, how do you know he has four arms? <laughs> he said, well, we have the, the words of the great sages and we have the scriptures. They confirm that. I said, okay. And I keep eating. How <laughs> <laughs> can I argue that? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to argue with you with the halva, you know, waiting there for me. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So that was my experience, you know, in the in that particular situation. See the devotees. So I I was you know it was a nice experience. So I went home, and so next Sunday I went there, and uh, I went I went back to the for more. I went back for more. <laughs> more for <prashana. laughs> you, you become a little addicted in there. So then uh, I went there, and then the uh, the president, he showed me a picture. He called me after the program and showed me a picture of a bus. It's like the Radha Damodar bus, that type of bus, you know. And then he said, you see, we're going to buy a bus, and we're going to travel all over Brazil. You want to stay? You can stay here, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. Yeah, I'm easy. I mean, I mean, what you call in the business of selling, a, a lay down. Lay down at those that, that they don't resist. They, you know, they buy, you know, how much? They buy, you know, no, no hassle, you know, no, no have to work so hard. So I said, okay. So I stay overnight. And the devotees took me upstairs. This is the place. He gave me a place to, to sleep. I was traveling, you know, he jacking around. So it was not very hard to sleep in the floor, all these things, right? The only thing is that there's something around uh, like three o'clock, three thirty. <laughs> Somebody came and, and just, oh, Prabhu, let's go. <laughs> let's go where? It's at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, whatever it is. Where are you going now? It's dark. Go back to sleep. What are you doing here? No, Prabhu, we have to get ready, take shower, get ready. There's something called Mongo Arctic. Mongo Arctic. Mongo Arctic. <laughs> and I tried to, I'd say, I tried to escape. fight a little bit, <laughs> escape. No escaping, man. No, no, no. You have to go. This is good. Blah, blah, blah. And, and no, I'm a sucker for Krishna. So, okay, I, I get, you know, I got all set up. Mongo Arctic, no problemo. And after the Mongo Arctic, the world is just going around, you know. It's like the day is just about coming and everybody's doing mumbling, this and that. So some, some, uh, I think the president said, go to this Mataji and get here some beads, you know, some, no, this is good for chanting. You know, what is chanting? You no, know, you just, you have to, you know, this is like a prayer, you know. No, prayer is good. I'm Italian, you know. So, yeah, prayer. Prayer is good. So, Mataji gave me this. Rosario. Rosario. Uh, Rosario. <laughs> and then she said, look, it's very simple. You put in your finger and then you chant this prayer. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. How can I, you know, remember all this? She gave me a little a book or, you know, in the back of the book was the mantra in there or something. You keep chanting, you know, don't worry. And you go like this. When you reach. 108. And you, you, you know, that's how you chant. Okay. So I went there. I found a place. I chanting. I forget. I look at the card or the book, you know, and I keep chanting, chanting up to. So many, oh my God, finally the last bid. You know, I chanted 108. <laughs> and I go so happy to the Mataji. And I, look, I finished. She said, very good. Now you turn around the bids, you chant more. What more? You have to chant 16 times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, just, oh, I was so furious, you know. Oh, you dumped me again, you know, just... You just, you know, but I kept chanting, you know, I, I just kept doing, and that was the fun. You got used to it, and that's how it happened. That's how it <laughs> happened. Tell us a little bit about your background when you were a kid and with your sister and your father. You were living in Sao Paulo. You went to school and yeah. where, well, tell us a little bit background, like what you were, Ordinary kids, you were harassed by somebody, and you were the one who harassed other people. What's the story? What's what school you went? What did you do? I went to this school. I went. I sh- we used to live in São Paulo, you know, in the urban area. So my father moved to a satellite town called Santo André. Santo André. Uh, Santo André is a saint. Yeah, you know, Santo André. So he, uh, there was a different town at that time. Now it's just uh, something there. It's just like a, a big, it's like a, you know, I don't know, Bampukur, you know, in Mayapur, <laughs> so you know, they all merging Kishan together. Nagar. Yeah. So they, uh, we live in there for a while in Santo Andrea, you know, one of some schools in there. But then, because how, how that happened? Okay. Uh, my mother put me into the Archidiocesano. That's oh, a school a in Sao Paulo. Since oh. we live in Santo Andrea, so I was interno, means I live inside of the school. Which is a priest school. It's a priest school, Jesuit. Jesuit, yes. Yes. And they, they're very imponent, imponent. There's a big walls and big construction, very European looking of buildings in there and everything. There is one thing interesting because I studied there maybe three, four years. And later on, as a devotee, so I went there to visit. And I, 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 no, as a kid, I see these big doorways and buildings. And I went, when I went there, there's a small door. They're normal. <laughs> Everything is small. <laughs> you were small at the time. What happened to the building? It's <laughs> encolio todo. No, and so I, that was an interesting experience. But it's still, you know, the building looks very imponent, very, very majestic. It made with this uh, German granite or German cement or something. You no, know, it's not just a normal construction there. So, <clears throat> were the people nice? The priests, they were good. And- okay, they, they were nice. You know, the, I don't remember anything special. But uh, I stayed there internal. I was in, there was four divisions: minor, a semi-minor, joven, and more young and youth. Uh, and then the majors, you know, whatever they call the four division. There, I was in the minor, and uh, we have. I was. How good. old you were? I don't know. I think it was maybe twelve, thirteen. It was a, you felt bad that your father and mother put you there? Was it like a punishment for you, mm-hmm. or was it not just? I just don't think anything. No, I didn't, I'm just asking. Well, I would miss my family, but I at the same time I look behind. It was like a brahmachari training. Yes, yes, it was a good training. Okay. You know, you away from your family, you don't get to uh, come see this babado. You know that oh, mommy yeah. here, mommy there, all these things. Mama you know? boy. Don't become yeah, mama boy. you you become more you know like resourceful. You know, and like that. Even though I was in the minors, you know, a bunch of kids in there. So I I, I remember that. So I was good in sports in the in the salon. How do you call it? futsal? They call it futsal. They have futsal in there. I was good in futsal. What is futsal? Is it like football? It's a small, smaller ball. Uh, it's a not so much bouncing ball. Okay, it's a small and the they play with the foot. The foot. So you should not touch the floor. No, no, no. 
the is the play the small is a small area okay. for the quadra. How do you call that? The the camp. Yeah. You know, it's a small area. You know, with a small goal. Oh, and five okay. people each side. Oh yeah, yeah. Calcetto, they call it. Calcetto. Calcetto yeah. So you know, it's small, foot, small football. Yeah, and they and go very fast, you yeah, know, yeah, because yeah. it's a small thing, yeah. you know, and the thing is going fast. I was good in that thing. And there's another thing I was good. I don't see around very much. They have this like a huge. It's not a stick. It's like a a piece of wood, like a tree, you know, very large, round, and then on the top you have this rope. With the ball, but the ball is the one like you're doing soccer ball. You, know, you keep punching. It's a little oval type of ball made of uh, leather. Mm -hmm. So you you're supposed to wrap the thing around, and then if you do that, you win. And uh -huh. and and the la la quadra is in four. There's four divisions. Two can play or four people can play. Oh, okay. You see, so it's two people. It's yeah, a it's a game, and I was good in that thing too. Yeah, I remember a champion. <laughs> Hope they have one there, you know, if that is in Goloka Bindav or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I will challenge whatever is there. So, so then that was, you know, the Archidio Cezano. So I finished in there. Then um, somehow I went to some other schools, which is more liberal. And then at one point, yeah, I, I decided to, I kind of, what happened, I was doing this school, it's called Objetivo, it was a very prepping you for the high school, you know, in Brazil, these things are so much, and it was a school that so many people in there, and class were like 50, 60 people, now, you know, in, in little, little rooms, some of my class didn't have any windows. Wow. They have TV though. Sometimes they give class by the TV and then three, four classes, no, the same teacher they are teaching, no. Anyway, I didn't like very much. So I uh, that's when I, I dropped and I went to travel. Then I, I met the books, then I met the devotees. Then uh then what happened was at one point I you know, as I become a devotee, we went out in Sankirtan. Which is so many stories in there. Yeah, of course. Right? Uh, three days I was in the temple. I was living like in paradise. That was so good. Prashad and stay back, you know. You know, the devotees going to Sankirtan. I was, you know, a little service here, a little day. Oh, cut that flowers in here, go a little painting here. The devotees come and drop a simply wonderful in the mouth. You know, it's like, you know, I, I, I gotta stay here. Oh, you know? right, Why should I go anywhere else? And I, want, I remember one time there was this Guru Puja and in the temple room, in this place, in the temple, they have this big window and you could see far away into the city down, like we're in the top of some hill or something. So we, let me think. Oh, so we have this uh, Prabhupada's Guru Puja. And at the end, you know, Jaya Prabhupada, and everybody dancing, and the girls are just flowing inside, it's colorful, and the boys, you know, the goldies, and jumping, and, and then they throw petals, you know? And oh, I, I was like, oh my God, you know, this is heaven. I want to stick <laughs> around here, you know, the perfume of the incense, all these things. It was wonderful. Then one day, I feel a little weight in my shoulder. <laughs> bag. <laughs> so what is this? This is a bag. Yeah. What's inside the books? Wow. What are you going to do with the books? You're going to distribute these books. You know, you know got to go in the car. You got to go in the street. You're going to go do the work now. No, the free ride is finished. <laughs> 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 Hare Krishna. So I went. My first time, you'll be something to remember. So what do you do? What is the Sankirtan thing? You know, no, no, you sell books, it is, you know, and they try to explain. So nothing can prepare you for a, a fresh, fresh uh, personality like this, you know. Uh, you know, I was middle class, I was, you know, 
we have a sheltered life. And, you know, I, I work a little bit in some situation, but not exposed in the selling anything to this, uh-huh. you know, hassling actually, you know. <laughs> so I, uh, they stop in one of the most busy area of Sao Paulo, you know, pure market, hardcore nose drivers, you know, going around and, you know, business here, business there, and people going up and down. He said, you know, they gave the book and they said, look, you, you, you show the book and you say, you know, a few lines, you know, they tell me a few lines I have to say, you know, this is yoga, this is good for you, whatever it is, and you get some money from them. I have no idea. So I, uh, <laughs> I went there and people passing and I, I go that one. No, then I go to the other one. No, no, that one looks very mean. <laughs> no, the other one, this guy looks easy, you know, and the one that must be a student, you know, you'll be easy on me, you know, so you're all mental about these things, you know, you're not really flowing with yeah. the flow. And, and the other, <laughs> they have one about me. It's like just going one, one, one. He's just going like a machine, you know, and I was struggling. And I, I showed the book. I practically hide behind the book. You know, I was, I feel so, how do you call it? How do you say that? Uncomfortable. Ashamed. Yeah, I feel ashamed, like, yeah. you know, I feel shamed. You know, look, I'm here. I'm selling this thing. You know, I feel uncomfortable. Yes, also. But there's nothing to be uncomfortable about. You know, you're doing, uh, you know, it's a nice thing. So I persevere. That is one of the qualities that get to you through. You persevere. You stick around even with the pain. There is other instances, and I can tell you, I persevere with the pain. I have some incredible realizations. That's another story for later. But this one, I persevere. I just keep doing. You go to the next, the next, and you get rejection, rejection, rejection. And then one guy, you know, duh, yeah, well, yeah, I'll buy it. You know, you put the hands in the pocket and give the money. And I got this money like a trophy, you know. Oh, look, I got it. Look, I got some money. Look, I got some the book. <laughs> I saw the book. This, this is a glory. <laughs> and the, the other guy with me, so what? You know, I'm already in the 50 books distributed. Go, keep it going, you know. <laughs> just, just completely <laughs> took away my enthusiasm. No, but no problem. We just keep going. So that is uh, the experience going on the same time. So I don't know how much time we have in here, but well, we will... have one hour. So we did uh, twenty-eight minutes. We have more time. So okay. You can tell some story if you like. You know, I, some I tell interesting story. Yeah, I tell a few okay. stories because I can see now there's always a story related to Krishna. When I came to then, you see how I came to India is because in the morning time, the Japa time. The president said, look, this was around November, December, or oh, this time. President come and told me, the devotees are going to India. If you want to come, you can pay your ticket. You can come too. Because at that time here in Mayapur, only the top dog, I mean very respectful, respectfully, that only the top sanctum people will come in here, the top distributors. And so they can collect with the books the, the ticket money and they come here. So the temple wouldn't pay me the ticket because I was uh, basically new. I did some work and so many people did work too. Then they're not going, but the top people, they're going. But if you can pay, you can come. So I went to my parents and I will forever be grateful to my parents, you know, the big papa. One Mama. second, they were, were they happy that you become a Krishna devotee? Okay. When my father, he, first I show up in my house, all <laughs> shaved up, dolly, you know, brahmachai collar, you know, my you mother opened the door and she go, toing. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> so she, she took like few seconds to process the image. Really Lord. long seconds. And she was... Through her mind, you know, all kinds of things are going on. You know, she tried to adjust, adjust process, and not, not say something that is offensive or not saying anything digest, because something's yeah, happening digest. here. So it, it was like, you know, processing the thing it took a while. But then she just, you know, said, well, let's come in. Let's talk about blah, blah, blah. And then 
I talk to her about my new fate, you know, <laughs> devotees, blah, blah, blah. And my parents is very amazing. My mother used to have uh, book, books of yoga, you know. At, remember, from, we had a library yes, at home. Yes. So she has books of this yoga, Ramacharaka. So uh, the photos, black and white photos of him, you know, he swallowing a clot to clean the stomach and then putting the clot out and they're doing all these abdominals, you know, Exercise. pushing back in and out. All these photos, you know, and all this, you know, not even my body, it's just pure yoga, technical and yeah. stuff, right? So I also had one of those books with the travel with me, which I discarded because this is, I don't, I, I don't get nothing from this thing. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> So my mom, I, I, I came to my parents and I, I told them they're going to India and always was a desire to go to India. Yeah. I remember I was like 15 years old. I, I went to Santos. That is a city next to where we go for our vacation home. Yeah. It was in San Vicente. We had an apartment there. So in Santos, there's a port, international port. Very big. So I went there. I went to a ship and said, take me to India, to the <laughs> captain. <laughs> to the captain you yeah. went? Some, uh, uh, what's it called? At that time, you, you know, you can go in and out. No, no, no. You know, I mean, not that difficult. So he said, no, I cannot do this. This is a legal thing. You know, it's, it's, you know <laughs> I got in trouble. No, but, you know, valeu, né? A tentativa. I tried. So I know so much I want to go to India, visit in India. I had this in my heart. You had some attraction. Yes, felt all like the time. Magnetic uh, call. True, true. So uh, the 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 president said, "You want you, if you want the ticket, you know, then you can come." So I I asked my parents. So okay, we send your sister to study, you know, somewhere in Europe, and she and now you know we should uh, give you this facility. And my father says something, you know, very interesting. I said, "You before you have long hair, you know, you know, you know we dress like you know in the sixties, in the seventies, right? Is. You know, long hair, you know, looking weird, you know, doing weird things, you know, and come you now two o'clock in the morning, and, and and it's weird, right? So my father said, you see, you became a devotee. Now I know where you are, what you're doing, you know, and uh, how can I find you?" And, and this is a very good thing because before you know what you're doing, you know, where were you and what, you, you know, what's going on. See, so he, he actually understood this is a good thing, you know, even though yeah. it's a complete different cultural, but, you know, uh, situation from the, his background, he understood that. And the Italians, you know, they have the system that the family will give one son for the church. Yes, always. See, so... You know, it's that's a normal thing. You no, know, somebody surrender to the work for God. You know, it's a, it's not like too it's far a, out. It's a glorious thing. It's a glorious thing. Which so, can help the whole family. Actually. Yeah. So he gladly said, "Okay, we will do it. We, you know, we get you to India." And they did. They pay my ticket. My mother helped me with the getting the documentation. At that time to get out of Brazil was like you know some political difficulty in so many ways, but we got through. You know, that was a, a visa and passport. Visa, you know. passport, all this thing. And I had a visa actually from America to go to to America because the flight will go to New York. In New York, everybody comes and they go yeah. to India in a jumbo. That jumbo, famous jumbo jet. Jumbo jet. That they came to Calcutta the first. Wow. They came to Calcutta, you know, there was like a, a big news. What at that was time. Pan Am Airline, American Airline? I, I can't remember. remember. I can't remember, but I remember this. We have 80% of the devotees in that plane. Wow. We brought in food, you know, in big containers, wow. stainless steel, round, big containers, halava, sabji, rice. We gave prashad and we have a kirtan it, and the, the plane will start rocking, you know. <laughs> and the, the captain Lord, said, it? hey, hey, cool down, man, <laughs> cool down. <Yeah. laughs> You're rocking the plane, you know, it's Driving the plane like a, a goat in the mountain, you know, it's, it's like, you know, <laughs> I tell you, weight is so important in, in absolutely, airplanes. Absolutely. When you book a ticket, the computer puts you, space you out. So, you know, there's not ever so many people in one side and the other yeah. side. So anyway, so we did it. 
So I, I, I came to India and it was like the Gloria of my life. Are you land in Delhi or Bombay? We, or? I think, I think it was Calcutta. I remember Calcutta. Calcutta. Yeah. Calcutta. And I remember they they stretched the the runaway so it could accommodate the new jets they're supposed to get in there. Yeah. Jungle jet. Yeah. From there, the airport, we got the buses and went straight to my airport. Wow. <clears throat> what was your first impression when you came out of the airport? Do you remember Calcutta, the people, the rickshaw? But well, I didn't see anything because we went to the bus, we talked to the road and we we're in Mayapur, Mayapur is a bubble, right? Then we went to, back to Calcutta, we took a plane and went to Delhi and another bus, we went to Brindavan, right? Another story in there. So in Brindavan, I, I got to, to go to stay in India. I, I got to stay because I just going to tell the story. How I got to stay in India, I always won. Yeah, you're supposed to go back. Yeah. You had a ticket to go back and everything. So how you managed to stay in India? Yeah. We, I, I tried to call Brazil because the president left. The president left before the festival. Something happened. In Brazil? And in here, my oh, in my He left. So I couldn't talk to him. Oh, your president? Yes, the one of, of the Brazilian Yatra at that okay, time. Okay. So he left for some reason. And so they told me, you want to stay in India? You have to, uh, president has to authorize. So I tried to call. And there was an uh, inked exchange right here in sort the front, in, no, you know. front gate. There was oh, a, a gate. remember, yeah, there yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. a exchange Small right there. Exchange. A tiny little house, you know. I don't know if the guy do that all day long. <laughs> if you hear, you remember that little tiny yeah, house. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sitting there waiting. You make a call. The call goes from Mayapur to Sarup Gan. Sarup Gan go to Calcutta. Calcutta go to Delhi. Delhi goes to uh, Delhi goes to New York. New York goes to Brazil. Brasilia, <laughs> São Paulo. You know, by the time you know Venus, Uranus, you know Saturn, everything lined up, all the planetary system. You know, <laughs> you're sitting there, you know, there, getting old. <laughs> I remember. It's so hard. So I couldn't talk to him. So I ended up going to Brindavan. At that time. The, the, then with Dayananda one day in Brindavan, he comes around and said, oh, probably said going to initiate it. We're going to get some names. So he started getting the names of the devotees of Brazil that came in there. And then he, when he came to me, another devotee came in. And he said, no, no, Maharaj, not this one. He's too puffed up. He just oh, said, he said, that. He, he said just like that. He's too puffed up. I never forgot. <laughs> Maybe it was right. I don't know. But, <laughs> well, I'm here, right? So, I, and I was so disappointed. But Maharaj said, no, at that time, they already figured out, no, he's going to stay in India. He should get initiated. So, I got in. And then, you know, you have the beautiful ceremony. And then I got the, the, the initiation. In Mayapur. In Brindavan. Brindavan, Brindavan. First one in Brindavan. Second in Mayapur. But, you know, how do... This was 1976. 1976, yes, yeah. correct. But how did I have to come to stay? Because, I tell you, you know, it's so amazing. I come in Brindavan and, you know, in my little English and Portuguese and whatever there was, translation, everything. As Sanyas was giving class, said, Prabhupada said, all the trees in Brindavan are Kaupataru trees. All the trees in the Holy Dam, actually. Yeah. The dark so, tree, they're the wish fulfilling tree. Wish fulfilling tree. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, very innocent. I merely accept that. So, I, this is it. I have a desire, right? I want to stay in India. So, I find a tree. I cut a deal with the tree. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I stay here. You spoke to the tree. You tell your prayer. That was my idea. Okay, hold on. Huh? Don't get ahead of the story here. So I said, well, what three? What three are going to get it? There's so many, right? Uh, so I, I went to the Parikram pad in the morning, you know, drop a time. I was going around looking, looking. <sighs> then I saw this beautiful tree. It was like love at first sight. This <laughs> is the tree that Krishna jumped to chastise Kaliya. Ah. with the Samadhi or Prabodhananda Sarasvati next yeah. to it. It's a beautiful it's a tree. It's a tree. 
It's a Tamil. I still have the Tamal, leaf Tamal. from that tree. Tamil tree. I have a leaf from the tree I carry with me. I have photo of that tree. That is, uh, you know, so I went and said, you are it. I have a desire. I know you are uh, fulfilling the desire of the devotees. This is a sincere. I convinced the tree that my, my desire was, was pure. You know, that it was not motivated. I just want to stay here, you know, something about doing service, this and that. And I on and on. I think the tree got no, so I cannot take this guy anymore. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I, and then I left. So I went back. I was late for breakfast. So I was eating at the tail end of the breakfast in the, what was that place? They, we didn't have the temple yet. We, uh, Paugao Ashram, I think that's Paugao Ashram. Paugao Ashram. Fogo Ashram, yeah. Fogo Ashram. The, we, we have the tents in there, and the voters are taking prasad in there, and some are staying there or something. So I was in the tail end of the breakfast with you know, me and a few sparse devotees in there, and the devotees came looking for me. He said, No, I, my name was, uh, I don't know, it was not Baggy yet, but whatever they call me. <laughs> and they said, Hey, you are a lucky man. You know, you're going to stay in India. Uh. Just like that. So, what happened was, uh, the Mayapur is like, you know, I would say in a, in a very nice way, I don't mean anything bad, but it's like a meat market in there. The voters come and the top devotees of the movement, they come in there. So everybody tried to convince everybody else to come to the Yatra. Right. Right. You come from your, your top distributor, oh, come to Cincinnati, come to LA, come to San Diego, come to Mexico, whatever. I give you this, I give you that, you know. It was like a market in there, you know. So, and uh, everybody taking the voters. And guess where they get most of the voters from? From Mayapur, you know, because all these devotees hanging there <laughs> so hard. Mosquitoes, they get sick, you know. They want some piece of America also, you know. So they go back to America, you know, and they go for the preaching and the good halava and the good prashad and everything, right? So what happened is there was no devotees left in Mayapur. So they went to Prabhupada and complained. Prabhupada, is, uh, we need men. There's no man for Mayapur. I think it was either Baba Nanda or Japtak or both. All the men left. Prabhupada said, what happened? All the men left. So Prabhupada said, you know, motion, no, because it was like all the devotees were around, you know, whatever. He said, let's just go get some men. He said, well, the GBC won't allow. They want the men from the south. So you know, then they, they talk and it you know, was agreed that each GBC would give you one man. And guess who the Brazilian actor gave? The schmuck buggy, you know, the new devotee. <laughs> he pays his own ticket. He may be going to bloop when he go back, you know, we keep all the good men for ourselves. So I was the one designated to stay. Plus, I want to stay like anything. So I, I, I got in. I got in. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that when the festival was over, everybody went back. We took a train of nine devotees, I think. I took a train back to Mayapur. From Rindavan. From Rindavan. Delhi. And, and, and now I have the first impression of India. India. Uh, when I arrive in Howard, Howard Station, and there was like, what's that, blackouts? Yeah, there was no electricity. That's a name they say, load shading. It was a load shading, yeah, whatever it is. And right there, we crossing the bridge, we're going to the no, the market, the ones that, the Bora Bazaar market. No, yeah. no, the Bora Bazaar, there was- The flower the, market underneath? No, that, that was um, the market where you take that juice, you know, the juice wall, they're really good. You know, <laughs> that's, uh, anyway, the, he does some nice, uh, no, what about that? Yeah, Mahatma it's Gandhi a, Road. Yeah, Mahatma Gandhi Road. The, the tram is going. Uh, no, what about that? Is near the temple. The one no, is no, the Bar Mawari. Oh, no, Bar Bar Bazaar is not Wari. Okay, so that one, yeah, Bora Bazaar. Right. What happened is they were they were building the new flyover Bora Bazaar. Now the flyover is there. You can yeah. see it cuts through the yeah. whole bazaar. You know, in ten minutes you are yeah. you know going to the other side of town. But at that time, it was such a confusion, you know. And then in the load shedding, they have all dark with the little lights, you know, because people selling peanuts. Yeah. And they have these little kerosene lights, <laughs> lamps, you know, here and there. So it was uh, in the night when you read The night. And oh. blocks of cement in this side, dust everywhere. And my first impression was that, oh, my God, they bombed this place. <laughs> 
Yeah, it looked like a <laughs> war or something. Yeah, and and, and there was uh, the the Bangladesh war was just uh, a few yeah. years ago, right? Yeah. So I said definitely they bombed this place. You know, this is like leftover from the war or something. You know, unbelievable it was every mystical like you know feeling in the thing. You know, and we just passed it real quick. You know, and said let's go, let's go. So that was my first impression. You know, in the Land of Bharat Varsa, when I actually meet the the, the reality, the reality of the in the in the life. <laughs> but then you reach Mayapur, and uh, then Mayapur, I, there was not so many people at that time. You know? There was nobody. Maybe twenty, thirty people. No, I don't think even then. And there was only the main gate, the and main the long gate. building was not finished, almost it's finished. A, I, uh, uh, I cannot. I don't Lotus think building was when there. I came in, it was not finished. There was no long building. The Lotus building was there, and the Didi was or Radha the, Madawa were there. Yeah, they just Only finished. They just finished the Lotus building. Yeah, and there was the long wall. You know, the boundary wall. Yeah, that's yeah, you no. Know, that's where we was. I was with yeah, Madhu Sevita. Pump. <laughs> I saved the life of Madhu Sevita. Mm-hmm. He, I, I, I went. He was my uh, roommate. And he, we have two beds. He was like, Brahmachari. He was Brahmachari. You know, now he's like, you know, ABC, XYZ, you know, he, uh, oh, he's everything. Now, but that time, he was just like, you know, Brahmachari. I think Temple Commander in there or something. Yeah, yeah. So he was my roommate. We really got along really good. I love that, that man. Good man. So I entered the room. And in the airy light... You know, the faint light, what they have in there and everything. I see on top of his mosquito net was a scorpion. And he has this tail ready to strike. Hook. Yes. Because they go where the, the, the skin mats the, with the net. You know, through the net, they can bite you. Yeah. So I, I immediately, Prabhu, don't move. And then like with a swap of my hand, you know, I throw the sucker away. And then we took care of that scorpion. And that's the only time I saw a scorpion in Mayapur. I don't remember seeing any more. Krishna, please. I hope I don't see it for a long time. I saw some snakes, you know, but not scorpion, which is you know, quite amazing. And, you know, he, you he, 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 he tells. Remember. He still remember. He tells, Baggy saved my life. <laughs> nice things like that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you another question. Yeah, is yeah. that what... What was your impression when you actually first time you saw Srila Prabhupada? That was in Vrindavan, right? Uh, no. Uh, I was in Mayapur first, okay. remember? So I, we came from, from Calcutta. Okay. Then we got, we got all set up. You know, we took shower, everything, you know, shaving. We tip top shape. So, Vrindavananda said, we're going to go now see Srila Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada want to see the Brazilian devotees. And there were some Argentinians in there, but no, they don't count so much. South Americans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking for the Argentinians. <laughs> we have a thing, you know. <laughs> they play bad soccer. What can I do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, so sure. then what was your impression when you went to the room? Was Prabhupada in his room in the Lotus building? Yeah, so we came in there. We all excited. You know, Maharaj brought us in. So... Maharaj comes in the room and he said, Srila Prabhupada, here are the Brazilian devotees. So Prabhupada was sitting. How many of you? Uh, there will be about six, maybe seven. So we have all this beautiful, clean-shaved Brahmachari cloth and everything. We didn't enter the room. We just stick our heads through the frame of the door. Oh. Right? So if you look from Srila Prabhupada, you see a bunch of uh, heads sticking out. Through the frame, no bodies, just the head. No, you make they start to see Prabhupada without not to take the vision from anybody else, right? So Prabhupada look at us, he turned the face, he see us, he was a little bit serious, like he is, whatever he was discussing there. And then he opened up in a big smile. It's like the sunshine came after the storm. You know, it was a beautiful smile. You know, that's like the smile that says, welcome. We love you. You know, thank you for coming. You know, we feel so much, you know, appreciated. But you now many years, I, I, I thought about that. So 
that, that smile, it means a little bit more than that because Prabhupada saw, this are the, you know, at that time, I couldn't make a phone call to Brazil. Brazil was the end of the world. You know, we, we have this thing <laughs> yes, for the yes. medieval times, right? The, the ship is going off the earth. <laughs> well, before that, it's Brazil there, you know? It's the end of the world. Nobody goes to Brazil, you know, it's like that. So, you know, and Prabhupada saw these people from Brazil, from the end of the world, they are chanting the holy name. They are propagate the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Prabhupada you know, was so happy about that. That's what I understood by that smile. Beautiful. But yeah. did you have also any interaction with Srila Prabhupada? Some other time, maybe, if you remember, and uh, Prabhupada spoke to you and tell you something, which could be something. I, I remember one time, I, uh, because Prabhupada was there sometimes before the devotees come to the festival. So, uh, Gagamuni was there in the room. So I came in and some other devotee was there. I can't remember what. And, and Gagamuni, he said, Prabhupada, this is our, uh, Bhagavatamrita. This is our best book distributor. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, that's what he said, you know, and, and, and he's, you know, and Prabhupada, he looked at me. And he's, he was very happy about it, right? And, and he said, do you speak Bengali? <laughs> I said, no, Sri Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada has like a quiz look on his face. He was thinking, you oh, know, how he's distributing. He's yeah, the I, best distributor. He do not speak Bengali, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, there was, there was so much fun, I tell you. So much fun. Okay. You like to tell us uh, one story, a couple of stories from the Sankirtan in India. We traveled so much, many years together in South India with Bhatyananda and all the group from Mayapur. So tell us some uh, beautiful story that you remember of the, because we are we are in December. This is the book marathon time. So I'm sure that our listener would like to hear some wonderful story of the book distribution we encounter in while traveling. Well, there's many stories, and right now, you know, once you start try to get the story out, you know, it just kind of know, the, the overloads <laughs> files, you know, system. I remember we took the boat because we did the boat program, you know, Nitai Pada Kamala. Nitai Pada Kamala. With, with small Gornitai. With small Gornitai. Yeah. Oh, that boat has so many so stories nice. in that, you yeah. know. So we took that boat all the way to, what is the name of the, you know, when the sails got burned and everything, you know. Diamond Harbor? No, or Diamond Harbor is further halfway. Down. Further, down. Further, down. Yeah. further down is that uh, the sages every year they have, uh, yes. they have uh, the festival. Yeah, the, the festival, festival is called uh, <clears throat> Amazing. Oh, yeah. I will come to my mind. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, in this place, every year they have a, a big festival, a big mail in there. And still today, we go there. The Sundarban. Is it Sundarban? Is it Sundarban? Yeah. yeah. The island. There, there's there is a, a particular name. There's yeah. a name in there. You know, this is where the sages, uh, no, the, the, they were burned by a sage. You know, the, the sons of a great Maharaj, they were burned because of some offense or a perceived offense or whatever, you know. So the ashes were there. And that's why the Ganga has to flow until there to purify their, you know, ashes, the, the ashes existence. So, in this place, we, we had the boat. You see, we had this boat, the Nitaipada. So we parked in there. Baba Budi was the, the chief, you know, captain of the boat. And we bought lots of books, crates and crates of books. And we distribute. Sargamela. Yeah. Ganga Sagar. Ganga Sagar. Yeah. Say your name. How can bar, you know bar, name? Ganga Sagar. So in your life, you <laughs> must go one time with Ganga Sagar. Yeah, Ganga Sagar is an amazing cold, festival. It's in the winter time it comes. Yeah, yeah. So we, we did amazing distribution of books in there. I still remember, you know, there was a, there was a, a like a, a, a pathway full of sadhus. Oh, those kinds of sadhus, you yeah, know. Yeah, the, yeah, Indians. Yeah, the, the, there was one that was like, uh, he was in the, you know, like the, you know, thorns. You know, there's a, there is a, a, a plant in here. They have these big thorns, you know, and they're very careful. They make walls in here so the cows won't go inside yeah, yeah, yeah. and eat their vegetables or something. So this plant, they have these thorns and the sadhu is sitting there, you know, right? on top of the, on top of the, uh, thorns, on top of the thorns. Yes. 
and that's another one. Then you go to the next one and the next, and, and the, each one has a specialty. And this one is, he's completely buried, you know, and only his hand is sticking out with a Japa bead, you know, and he's chaining the Japa. inside the sand. He's inside the earth, yeah. you know, whatever. He's and buried. Only his hand is coming out of the earth. No, the, the hand's coming out. He's, there's a Japa in there, and there's a plate. You know, people put people in coin there, one, and, and that's right. his helper is there watching. That nobody is not doing anything Silly. funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's impressive, you know. Yes, that, that's yes, impressive. Yes. And then there is another was the elite of the sadhus. They have this. They have you no. Know, they not see these people. They just you know sit in the side of the road. But these ones, they have little huts that they you know they are the top sadhus. You know, there's a one he tried to. Uh, in, 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 uh, to recruit me to wow. go to some holy place in the Himalayas or something, you know, he wants me really bad, you know, a little Saib, you know, you love it. White skin. Yeah, white skin and everything. He was, he had like one leg, you know, he's standing one leg, like Irani Akashipu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has this thing coming from the roof and he's putting one elbow in there yeah. and the other leg up and in one leg. So I met then, the same guy in Himachal Pradesh. And oh, so maybe. No, it's the same know. guy, you know, with a, he had a piece of wood and a rope catching yeah. the tree like this. He's sleeping, he's sleeping in the night with one leg. Yeah. So the only thing is that, you know, at one point he looked around, he looked the other side, and then he goes, walk to the front. Hey, you have a beady? Okay, <laughs> you know, he got a beady from the guy. He went back there, he's in one leg again, you know. So that, that was like, you know, his mystic power or something, you know. <laughs> but the top one was the King Cobra. Oh, cobra. oh, the uh, king cobra. They have the, the super hot, you know. I, I would say, you know, we even have air conditioning and everything. No, it doesn't have, but he was top of the line. This hut was like a super hut, and he was the king cobra, the big babu sitting, waiting for audience and the trembling, you know, you're going to see the king cobra. So I was like, you know, what's going on in there? So <laughs> one time I was talking to the one leg guy, right? So I, I see the king cobra now. He's coming out and he's huffing and puffing. Oh, I've, 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 you know, and in front there is like some Bastard. fire thing, you know. And he goes there, put the hand in there, and smear himself all ashes. You know, all the smoke going around. Ah, he's you know putting ashes all over his body. You know, I've, 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 you know, and and he goes back, you know, into the thing. I don't know. Maybe his reading was like, you know, a stuff reading in there with some whatever it is, no political bubble in there or something, you know. So those are the days. We just <laughs> humble brahmacharis, no. We just you no know, hand out the books. It was fun. Okay, Baggy, you like to invite all the listeners to come to Mayabu. So you are the best person to okay. invite them. Of course we can go here for many hours, but we almost establish our We are in that time frame. I understand. Yeah, we are in the time frame. I so, miss you all. And yeah. you now you're listening to this. And it is amazing because we senior devotees, we don't know the power we have to say certain things and how the people take them and they take into the heart and they take deep into the heart for a long time. Because today itself, I was Prabhupada Puj and then I going around, this Bengali boy approached me and said, Prabhu, Prabhu, I remember you. You gave a lecture so many years and you said you know ek boy ek taka you know in the, you know the sankirtan story and everything you know in the beginning was one gita gun ek taka yes. you know yes. one rupee yes. and he never forgot you see so it's like you know so if you got something in your heart and this you come to mayapur because in the game of life when you end up in mayapur you are the winner at least you come here you get in the heart mayapur and you take it Whatever you are, and you make that your Mayapur, you know, extension. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. No, yeah, you take with you. Mayapur is very powerful. It's extremely powerful. So you come in here, you take the mercy. And if you can stay, great. If you're not, you go back and plan to come back here and stay. Mm -hmm. you no, know, and, and build a life in a way that you have a place in here, not only for you, your family, for generations to come after you. You see that they can take shelter in this holy dome. Okay. How's your vision about the new temple coming, opening in another couple of years? So we have a lot of work to do. And uh, 
there's a lot of services which people can render from all over the world. But how do you see yourself in 10 years? Let's say, now? My Apur will be the new Tirupati. Correct. Not in terms of holiness, anything. I'm not disputing anything from Tirupati, from Mayapur, but in terms of crowd people. People okay. will come here in a volume that we, we never thought possible. You know, India has a billion and a half people. You divide that by 365, uh, 10 years, you know, you can have, you know, so many people coming every day. You won't believe it. Without talking about the, the second comers or the third comers. <laughs> and they, people from around the world. It's true. And they will come here. You see, I went in Cambodia. They have this temple in there in Cambodia. Angkor yeah, we Vat. went together. Yes. Angkor Vat. And I went to Angkor Vat. And I try to get something from this. It's what used to be a Vishnu temple, you know, Angkor Wat. And then there was change. They put you know, Buddhism and this thing going on back yeah, and yeah. forth. Originally, it was a, a Vishnu temple. Yes. And I was there trying to get something from this temple. And, you know, it's very little you can get, unfortunately. You know, besides you see the, the stones, there's nothing much history, nothing it's much written. You know, exactly. But here, you see this TOVP is a live monument. Yes. It's going to talk to you in amazing ways. And we finish the chandelier. You're going to have, like, uh, how do you call that? The idea of the universe. Of the cosmos. Cosmos. And it's alternative understanding of how this universe is situated according to the Vedic principles. And it's, it's refreshing. It makes a lot of sense. Despite, you know, some uh, theory that is like, you know, all came out for some explosion. I don't know who detonated that bomb, who pushed the, <laughs> the first button, you know, uh, whatever. You see, it, it makes a lot of sense. And utterly going to destroy the idea of this uh, materialistic, uh, so the idea of the world was created by a materialistic means. You see, and that is the beauty of this temple. Plus, the vault is there chanting, and it's a beautiful architecture too. It's just pleasing just to see the temple. You know, it speaks to you in so many ways. Nice. So we have a lot of work to do. We like to invite everybody to come and yes, please. We come. You uh, no, come to me, Ganga. The, well, all the 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 big. Uh, no, we're here to serve. The devotees. My service in Mayapur is to facilitate people that wanted to stay here somehow to facilitate their stay in nice. so many ways by giving the association, by giving the counseling, by give even to tell them where the pipe man, the electric man is, how can make their life better in so many different ways. So thank you for this opportunity to speak. We have a good time. Thank you so much, Baggy. And, uh, I'm sure that uh, when people come, we'll search for you and you will guide them and inspire them to stay here more. And uh, everybody's welcome and everybody can participate in this beautiful movement which Srila Prabhupada has created for all of planet, for everybody Correct. to get uh, enlightened and to become happy because this movement is meant to make people happy. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. And uh, do, uh, remember one thing, you know, uh, you know, it's being preached all over the universe and, you know, not just this earth planet, you know. So maybe someday we're going to go beyond the confines of the earth. We're going to preach to some you know, extraterrestrial living entities. Sure. You're not your body. That can't fun you know, function anywhere. All right. So I hope I'm you, with you. I hope you won't cut that from the interview. <laughs> get the best, get the best spaceship. We are ready. The UFO, whatever it is. Let's go. Thank you once again, Baggy. Thank Bye you boy. so much, Radio Maya Pro. Please listen to us. The link to your heart. Haribo. <laughs> You're listening to Radio Maya Pro with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is. Radio Mayapur.